instantaneous speed. You ever got a speeding ticket? Have I ever got a speeding ticket? Yes, I have. I, mean, I was actually moving into college. Oh, yeah. I, think you got speed. I was going 110. <laughs> 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 And then they said, the cops like, I can tell you're excited to move into college, so I'll let you off. I'll give you a ticket saying you're going 85, and I had to go to traffic school and the whole thing. Don't speed. It's really dangerous. But it was in the park between California and Arizona where there's like nothing out there. Oh, I don't mean, really? There's cops out there? That's what I said, too. <laughs> and they pulled me over, and I was like, where did you come from? <laughs> I guess he was playing like hide-and-go-seek, and I got tagged it. He was good though. I didn't see him at all. And then when he got me, I was like, oh my god, my life's over. I was in my parents' car too. Okay, I'm gonna take this down really quick. So what's the difference between Okay, what's the difference between constant acceleration and an acceleration that is not constant? So how how I explain this is one, obviously a constant acceleration is just gonna have a consistent bump in velocity. A different one might, or a non-constant one, would have either a huge bump velocity or a huge like downgrade in velocity. How they would look on a graph is if I do constant, right? So I'm gonna go meters, second, oh, this is not meters, this is gonna be velocity, so it'd be meters per second. My constant acceleration would look something like this, or down. It's just gonna be constantly moving on a graph. So I'll even write constant. Could it also be just a flat line? Is that constant? Yeah. Yeah, it's constantly zero. So it could be straight up, straight down, flat. It's just basically if it has the same slope for a period of time, that's constant. Something that would not be constant might be something like this. Whereas if I have my seconds and then I have my meters for a second, it might look something like that. That's not constant. Does that, yeah. that make sense? The other thing that you might see is you might be given numbers. So you might be given, I'll do it on this side, is have you ever seen something like this, like a t-chart? And it'll say like seconds and then meters per second, that kind of stuff. I don't like this. You, you know what I'm talking about on this? So a constant one would be like if I went zero, one, two, three, and I just put one, two, three, four. It's constantly moving up at one meter per second. Of course, these numbers are kind of elementary. You probably wouldn't see that on a test. It would be more complex. It would probably go from like, probably be like uh, six, 18. 18? Okay, what else? What could be that? Give me a second. 18 times 3, right? Oh, 30. 30. No, it's not. It's not 30. Not 30 <laughs> so let's choose a different one to make it easier on us. So I'll just say 9. What comes next? Something like that. You just want to see a constant increase in that speed. So if I did something opposite on this side, you might see a problem with the T chart. It would say seconds and then meters per second. So if I go zero, one, two, three, it would be something rapid. So it could be like six, 15, 28, 34. Like it's gonna just rapidly increase. So this one would actually create that kind of curve like that. Cool? Yeah. So if you see a pattern within it, a constant increase in acceleration, you're gonna look for something like that, and if you see something rapid where there's no real pattern, but you see it's increasing rapidly up, you're gonna look for something like a parabola shape. Um, but yeah, there might be one or two questions on there that have something like with a number chart and ask you to recognize which one is constant and which one is not constant acceleration. The same principle could be used for a distance and time one also. So if I change meters per second just to just meters, you use the same idea. So it wouldn't be constant, it wouldn't be rapid acceleration, it would be rapid velocity. All right, last one, what does the slope of a speed and time graph represent? We were going over that already. So a speed and time graph is going to represent acceleration and a distance time graph will represent velocity. Got it. Cool? Yeah. Are we all on the same page? Yeah. Do we have any questions? 
All right, again, I'm gonna take a um, <coughs> scan of my notes and post them online. Uh, and that way, when you guys watch the video, if you wanna study with the video, you guys can look at the notes, look at the video, <coughs> and kind of go over some of the stuff. Um, but yeah, this should be basically the gist of module C. So all the uh, AO one through five should be covered in this. Um, if you have questions on any of the stuff through one through five, please come and talk to me. I know that there was one question in uh, CO4 that was causing some issues for people, um, and that was displacement. Um, so on that one, you just have to find the area, and it's in the module. So try to review that, and then if you have questions, you can either email me on Canvas over the weekend, um, or send me a, a quick e email over your student email, and I can answer any questions, all right? Cool? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn this off.